welcome to Commander Central episode 326, and today we're going to talk about playing Commander with new people. I'm Dana. I'm Max. And I'm Chris. Chris and Max, we're all three together again after a couple shows of, of not having all three of us together. How are you guys doing today? Pretty good. It's Friday. I'm happy. It is. And we've got a little party tomorrow that Max and I are going to, his, his father's uh, retirement party. Yes, finally. So that'll, that, that'll soak up most of uh, your Saturday, at least. Yeah, and I have a wedding this afternoon, so I'm kind of booked all weekend. Nice. How about you, Chris? Any exciting weekend plans? No, not really. I have to work, <laughs> so. I suppose with our, our, our shop owners are kind of out of uh, on, on maternity and paternity leave, so you're picking up extra responsibility there. Well, not only that, but two of my employees have COVID, so I'm like, Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! So like, well, what a perfect combination. Yeah, like tonight I have to work because literally there's only one other person that's working, and I'm like, well, I guess my day on off. I'm coming in anyway. Is whatever. <laughs> on a Friday night, that'll be fun with two people. Right. We'll see how it goes. At least there's no like tournaments or anything this weekend. Yes, that is a or, one, big positive. Or a pre-release or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> nah, I have ran pre-releases with just two people before. It sucks horribly, <laughs> but it can oh, be I, done. I would imagine. Yeah. Well, before we get into talking about any of this stuff, um, I'm gonna ask anyone actually get to play any games this week? Or are we just all too busy to actually play Commander? Too busy. Uh... I, I played, I get to play on stream. That was really it. Um, I will mention this just because I know Chris has, back in the day, had some terrible experiences with with Warping Whale when it was in standard on occasion. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I got to nail, I got to counter a Jessica's Will with a Warping Whale. Wow. That's, <laughs> so that's good. That felt real, real good. And it's it's only in the deck because it's a deck that's running a, a bunch of Eldrazi spawn and Eldrazi scions. Yeah, so you're just playing it usually to make the token. Yeah, but I just happen to have it in hand, and it's, you know, it's an instant, so I'm like, I might as well wait until end of turn. And then, then uh, yeah, Joey had his commander out and cast Jessica's Will, and I'm like, oh, I, I can't not counter that. That's that's just too funny. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, got him with a Warping Whale. That felt great. I'm trying to remember. I don't think I've, I've played any games this week. I know I did last week, but... This week, I, I don't I'm think definitely, I have yeah, I'm definitely going to make sure I get in the shop this week to get some games in. Um, it's just been, things have been a little too hectic. Summertime's always kind of crazy hectic. Once winter rolls around or fall rolls around, things chill a little bit. But yeah, I just have not gotten nearly as many games outside of like Command Fests and stuff as I, as I would have liked to just locally. So I'm hoping to definitely get in this um, this Tuesday and play a few. Yeah, so I'm going to call you out, Dana. You know, embarrass you in front of everybody that listens <laughs> oh, no, and be no. like, you do know that we open up at four o'clock, right? I did. Yeah, I, I forgot. <laughs> I happened to be out running errands and I was like, oh, I'll stop in the shop and grab this thing. And I'm like, it's five after three. They should be open. I walked up the door and I'm like, what? And I looked in and there's Ben and I like, I shook him. I shook my fist at him. He holds up four fingers. I just shook my fist at him. <laughs> <laughs> you never came back was, either. And that's why we're like, hmm, was he embarrassed to come back or what? No, I, I was just like, oh, well, I'll just deal with it later. It wasn't a big deal. So <laughs> I have been in that boat, Dana. But mine is usually on like a Saturday. I, like, I'll wake up, run my errands in the morning, be like, oh, cool, it's noon. I can stop at the shop, grab some cards. And I'm like, no, nope, right. they don't open for like three hours. <laughs> okay, Guess that's not well, happening. <laughs> yeah, that's that was basically what had happened. So I, I, will, I will maybe swing in tonight, Chris, since you're, okay. you're running the shop and, and, and pick up a few things I needed. Well, if you out there in the listener land uh, showed up to your shop too early or have anything else you want to share with us, how would you go about telling us, Chris? Well, you can find us on a multitude of social media platforms. You can find us on Twitter, at CMDR Central. You can search us up on Facebook, CMDR Central. You can find us on YouTube by searching CMDR Central. You can also find us online at CMDRCentral.com. You can also head over to Patreon.com slash CMDR Central and check out our reward tiers, such as joining our community to play virtual EDH with everybody. Yes, thank you very much for, to our Patreon supporters and to our listeners. Any way you support the show, whether it's through Patreon, whether it's through listening, whether it's clicking that like and upvote button, we do really appreciate it. So thanks to everyone out there. Before we get into the main show topic, we had a bunch of previews, not specifically card previews, but just like informational previews about Dominaria United and the next reasonable amount of history of time coming up for, for Magic product. So I have um, a question so, for you before yeah. we go into this. I heard a rumor going around the rumor mill that the Wizards found, <laughs> I'm going to get you the exact wording on this. They I feel found, like Chris is doing air quotes right now in front <laughs> right, of his computer. Yes. I am. Yeah. Okay. The exact words from someone said, oh my God, Wizards 
found original Legends booster boxes in a warehouse that was being shut down in the middle of nowhere in Washington State. And they have opened them all, and they're putting singles into Dominaria booster packs. Is this true? (laughs) So, whether or not the warehouse portion is true, the singles in Dominaria United Boosters portion is true. So, I'm not sure how much of that is like an affectation, like, hey, look, we found this thing. Because if you remember back when Cold Snap came out, that was kind of the thing, too. Oh, we found this third (laughs) set of Ice Age that we forgot, you know, that was lost, whatever. I'm not sure if this is one of those kind of things where they're just like, wink, wink, we we found these in a warehouse. Although, I, I can't imagine there's that many, like, boxes of legends that they were able to round up out there without anybody noticing either. My guess is they knew they were there, they had them. And it was just like, this was the time to crack them. I don't think they, it was uh, something, I, I doubt it was something that anybody forgot, but I guess who knows. Regardless, they cracked a ton of boxes of legends, like cases and cases. Supposedly, it took multiple days to open them all up. Oh, that is a lot. Yes. So, what is it? I think it was 2% of packs. So two out of a hundred will have a card from the original, like a literally original Legends card, not even a reprint. It's a card from a Legends booster pack. Isn't it also only the collector boosters? Oh, only only collector's boosters as well. Yep. So and um, interesting. And there's a short list of cards that are not included. Obviously, anything that like are banned art, like Invoke Prejudice. But there are a bunch of other cards that kind of shocked me not to make the list of being put into packs. But but Moat is on the list, so there's a chance they cracked Moat, so they put they put in a couple Moats. There's some Tabernacle of Pendra Vales in there, Angus. stuff like that. So yeah, there's legit big money cards that they've they've put in packs. Now a bit of editorializing. Don't go buy collector's boosters packs for the hope that you crack a moat. That's just not going to happen. But if you are someone who already buys collector boosters packs, maybe you'll get a nice little treat. So there's a good chance it'll be like a cobalt of care keep or something versus an actual tabernacle. But it's a cool thing. I like when they do stuff like that, even if like I never see one. Whether it was like the god packs back in Theros that had you know all 15 gods or whatever it was, that kind of stuff is fun, and I appreciate when they do that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is kind of adjacent to that. The box topper that will come with with Dominion United boxes are updated versions of the legendary creatures from Legends. So like you had Ramirez de Petro was one of the legendary the first legendary creatures from that set. He's a, you know, six man of four three with first strike, so a pretty bad creature. There's a new version of Ramirez, so it's called Ramirez de Petro the Pillager, four mana for a 4-3. Uh, when he ETBs, you lose two life and create two treasure tokens, and whenever one or more pirates you control, deal combat damage to a player, you exile the top card of that player's library, and you may cast that card as long as it remains exiled. So it's it's just a, like, you know, how, how oftentimes when we revisit a plane, we'll get a different version of a previous legendary character, and we have four different Omnaths at this point. So so they, they took 20 of the legendary creatures from the original Legend set and made new versions of them that will be the box toppers. Uh, 19 are legendary creatures. One is a planeswalker. So that's, you know, going to be bolus, I'm assuming. That's my guess, too. I was just yeah. about to ask. I was like, did they redo all the legendary dragons then? Or is yep. it just are they going to be like the same? Because they have reprinted them already. So they could just reprint them already again. Yeah. Right, who knows? I, I would bet they're new versions. I, I, I would bet we would not get reprints of like the, you know, Arcades of Strategist. I would bet it would be, if we did get the Dragons, I bet it would be a new version of Arcades. So who okay. knows? The, the, the three we got previewed were, were Tor Waki, who was kind of a bad Rakdos um, commander that could yep. tap to do two damage to, I think, an attacking creature. We got a new version of him. We got a new version of Jasmine Boreal, who had some pretty rad art in the original Magic Sab, but wasn't a good creature. So those are the three they previewed. So there's, you know, going to be 20 of those as box toppers. And I, th- I believe those are only available as box toppers. Makes sense. So that's awesome. I, I am a big fan of that. I, I, you know, legendary creatures are great. It's great to get some. As someone who since has played Magic since the dawn of time, like I remember when Legends came out, that was a big deal. Both gold cards and legendary creatures like that. It felt like there was this big backstory for all of these characters, which there kind of was. I think they were all characters from someone's D and D campaign, if I remember correctly. Hmm. So to see like new, much more playable versions of them really hits the nostalgia button for me for sure. Does that kind of work for you guys as well who who necessarily, weren't necessarily playing back then or or do you not have that kind of attachment to those characters? I personally don't have that attachment to the characters, but I do think it's really cool that whenever they bring back older characters and buff up their story and we get a little bit of a this is what's been going on with them type yeah. of, you know, story. I, I enjoy that. 
you know, we've gotten to see that with like some of the Ravnica sets. So it's cool that they're doing it with, you know, Legends and they've done it with Dominaria. So I enjoy it. I just don't have the connection to those characters. Sure. How about you, Chris? I'm just more excited that they're going to be playable. More yeah. than anything, because I mean, they are, they are horrible. <laughs> the original ones are. I mean, you... aside from Angus and I mean, there's like three or four. Now I think Nebuchadnezzar might be interesting. There's um, who's the lands guy in um, Naya? Oh, the sand uh, H- creature H- dude. H- H- yeah, Hazazan Tamar. So there's a handful of them were, that were decent, but like, yeah, n- n- nine out of ten of them were genuinely like worse than a bunch of like worse than craw worms. Yes. In, in terms of how they were costed. So um, the next thing they previewed was there's going to be two commander decks from the set. So we get two commander decks every time. There's going to be two of them. Um, one is a five color deck led by a new um, Jared Carthalian. One is a three color deck led by a new Gahada. So um, I believe those are both Planeswalker cards as well. So Planeswalkers as commanders, I believe, that are, that are leading those decks. So yeah. A five color Planeswalker that's actually going to be legal? Yeah, I believe so. That'll be interesting. Yeah. The the theme boosters we've got in the last, I don't know, two years since Ravnica, I believe, since the the Ravnica set, the third Ravnica set, those are being replaced this time, and I believe moving forward with jumpstart boosters. Correct. Uh, pe- people like their jumpstart. Yeah, that's a cool thing, too. I appreciate that. It's also a way to throw some, some reprints and new cards out there, which is always a welcome thing, so... So yeah, the Jumpstart will be available in every set moving forward, it looks like, instead of Theme Boosters. That's very cool. I like that. We got a preview card for that. It wasn't anything too fancy. Um, the Lanawar Loam Speaker. So it's a, it's a two mana, one three. You can tap for mana of any color, and you can tap it to make a land you control into a three, three elemental creature with haste um, only as a sorcery. So maybe some lands matter decks want that. I'm not sure, but that's a, a new card that will be in those Jumpstart boosters. Although I'm not sure if that was also going to be in Dom United or in, in, in both. I don't really know. But anyway, we got a, preview, a, a card called um, Evolved Sleeper previewed based on what the card does. It's one of those cards where like you can cost, you know, one or two, it costs one mana in this case, and you can spend a mana to a, to evolve it. So uh, it was a figure of destiny was like the original one that kind of worked that way. Mm-hmm. Yep. Similar thing, you know, put a man into it. And there's like three different steps. The one thing worth noting is it evolves into a Phyrexian. So evolved sleeper in this case is referring to like the Phyrexian sleeper agents. I think we all kind of knew Dominar United was, was dealing with Phyrexians, especially given the brother war, Brothers War set as well. But I think that's kind of final confirmation that this is actually going to be a team up to fight a new Phyrexian invasion. So... Yeah, I think we speculated that back when they first yeah. said that, uh, you know, Dominaria, that we're going back to Dominaria. I think that that's what our speculation was. Yeah. And, and, and it's relatively obvious, I think, too. But, like, confirmation is always cool. Yeah. Um, we got a card called Temporal Firestorm, which was previewed. Worth noting that both Jaya and Teferi are in the art. And it's one of those old kind of cards that we saw um, back in the old border days, you know, in the late 90s. Where, it, like, it's a, it's a red spell that has a kicker of white and... Or blue and so like you can kick oh, it either direction back from like invasion yeah yeah the apocalypse okay. sets yep so it's one of those style cards which you know there's limited decks that can run them because it has to be in three colors for commander but like it's a super I, I always thought those were a neat design it's like kind of the Raka yep. Dega yep. kind of style stuff they had back in the day so like that's what that that's a throwback to that as well I'm I'm always a fan of throwbacks we got a Jaya card preview and I won't read the whole thing out but so clearly Jaya is going to be back on this set teaming up with everyone. And it's a four mana planeswalker, or four ability planeswalker as well, which is always mm. tends to be relatively powerful. Yep. There was a few game day promo kind of cards. Um, nothing too crazy. One of the new ones from from Dominar United was a called a Shivan Devastator. It's a Dragon Hydra, uh, flying in haste, and it's just red and X. And when it, and it enters battlefield with X plus one counters on it. So hey, I'm always a fan of anything that's a Shivan ish dragon and combining that with like a Hydra is kinda cool. There's a spell pierce promo for store championship stuff that looks kinda neat. There's a textless Omnath Locus of Creation for the store championship winner. <laughs> so they Joy. took the card with took a card with the most possible text on it, made a textless version of it. Why would they do that? <laughs> like Cryptic Command worked so well. <laughs> And you know, here here's my deal. Here's my beef with this Omnath card. It looks like 1997 3D animation that you saw on like your Nintendo 64 or something. Like it's not great art, in my opinion. Y- yes, um, it's a little simplistic. I actually kind of like it, but I agree, it's not what I was. I was expecting something way more complicated from the Omnath, and it's not that. Gives me like Beast Wars, the animated series a, a type of bit, animation. Yeah. 
Oh, I totally forgot about that show. <laughs> Uh, to continue a theme we saw last time we were in Dominari where there was a bunch of like stained glass things and the art for characters, which I think is a theme of the uh, Sarah Church. The special basic lands this time are stained glass looking basic lands. So they look like stained glass windows. Oh. And they look fantastic. So if you are somebody who likes to have special basics in your deck and like not to have them repeat, here's another sequel, su- sequence of cool basics. I don't believe they're entirely borderless, but they have really thin borders. They look really cool. Hmm. So we got those. Here's one for Chris. No. <laughs> ah, yes. No. I've been waiting for, for this one. For the for the upcoming Magic 30 event, and I think this is just a, one of the events, but I guess I'm not positive. It's a foil, old border, uh, new art Sarah Angel. How do you get an old border new art? I gotta look this one up. This it makes looks no super sense to cool. Me. It, it, and it says like 1993 in the corner, and it has like the starburst thing at the bottom, like the old border, the old style foils. Looks really cool. Hmm. So that's one of the Magic Thirty promos. There's also a, a ball lightning, which I which I think is using an art we've seen before. That's the ball lightning art from the Fire and Lightning Premium deck. Well, there we go. And that says 1994 has a 1994 stamp on it, and the 1995 stamp one is a Findhorn Elves, and that's only going to be in German, even if you live in the states. So I believe. If I understood that correctly, from every single year, from the beginning all the way up, there's like a special one of these cards that's printed in an old border foil with a date on it from when it was first printed. And some of them will be in non-English only. So like the Finhorn Elves is the promo from 1995. That will be only in German. So we could, you know, conceivably get a chain lightning that's only in, you know, Dutch or something. Who knows? There's definitely, they said a Japanese one. There's definitely a Chinese one, I believe. So that's a, a, a weird special promo thing as well. And if there's a particular card that like you were a super fan of, then you have a chance to get it. Like Chris can get this, this cool Sarah Angel. Yeah, it does look pretty good. I really hope they troll everybody and Colossal Dreadmaw gets one of like the like the 2019 <laughs> cards or something. <laughs> that would be pretty great. The last thing they mentioned was um the the upcoming 20 20- 22 through 2023 preview schedule. So they released it with a bunch of kind of blanks on it. So Dominar United, we we obviously know is September 9th. Brothers of War is November 18th. I guess they, they, they didn't officially confirm this, but one of the things we had wondered was we'd assumed Brothers War would be like a set set in the past. And I guess I didn't say it wasn't, but it's definitely tied in with Dominar United in some way, shape, or form because the, 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 the Q1 2023 set is codenamed Lacrosse. We don't know the real name of it yet, but that's also part of Dom United and Brothers War. And there's a set from Q2 2023 that's codenamed Marathon, we don't have the name for it yet, that's tied in as well. And then there's something coming out shortly thereafter that that's the Marathon epilogue that's going to like wrap all four of these sets up. So it isn't a traditional block, um, Blake said in the announcement, like, we, like we're used to in the past, but all four sets are chained together, leading to some culmination of a storyline. Mm. I hope we get like a flashpoint thing where just everything resets and we can <laughs> get new characters. I mean, we, my guess is the marathon epilogue is going to be the commander decks. We've been getting those in Q2 anyway. Yeah. Shortly thereafter a set, they're usually tied into whatever that fourth set is. So I'm going to guess like marathon is going to be the storyline and then the commander decks will be whatever the wrap up is for this, this, this Phyrexian invasion storyline. There's also a, the, the, a Q3 set called Netball, codenamed, and a Q4 set that's called Off-Roading. August 18th, they are going to tell us what the names of those officially are. So in, you know, a, roughly a month, four-ish weeks for the Thursday announcement, we'll get what those sets are called, all of them, including Netball and Off-Roading. So that will probably clear things up a little bit, but I don't know how much that really matters. So at least Netball and Off-Roading will not be part of this larger storyline, so it could be anything. I wonder if we are going back to Mirrodin then, if they're doing this big of a block thing. Could well be, sure. Yeah, I, I, Lacrosse or Marathon could easily be something tied with Mirrodin as part of that storyline. Yeah, back to, to Ravnica. Back to Ravnica. No, not? not back. I mean, <laughs> well, I, Ravnica actually does really well, but I mean, you saw what happened when we went back to Innistrad again. Every, not a lot of people like those sets, so... All right, so we've gone over all that. That was a lot of news. Let's jump into talking about the main show, though, here. This sure. was suggested to us by TV Boy in our Slack. And I had read this Reddit post initially and just skimmed past it. But but he brought it up and thought it was a good thing to talk about. And I, I, I do kind of agree. And then Chris had some thoughts as well. So I, I will read the the breakdown, basically, of the Reddit post. The original poster was a 22-year-old woman who 
traditionally played 60 card formats regularly at her LGS for at least a year and had made friends with people there that played in those 60 card tournaments who she said were very friendly and outgoing. Recently, she had gotten into Commander and decided to go to the LGS's Commander Night, which was a day of the week she'd never normally went to the LGS. She got there about 10 minutes before the advertised start time, but said there was already two full pods deep into their games, uh, one of which included the shop owner who was the only one working that night. She said she didn't recognize any of the players there from the nights she normally played, so she decided to sit down at one of the pods to watch. She tried to strike up some small talk with people and said that all of the players there, ex except the shop owner, basically refused to look at her or acknowledge she existed, and the shop owner would only do so when she asked a question about the store or the event calendar, but he also kind of ignored her. To be clear, the OP says they didn't excuse her or ask her to talk to them after the game. They just ignored her completely like she was a ghost. Um, they also talked among themselves the whole time, so it wasn't like they were just silent. She wound up leaving the store after a decent amount of time without having gotten to play a game and said it was really awkward and made her wonder if she had done something wrong and made her have serious second thoughts about going back to try to play again. And the thing that had um, bothered TV Boy about this was so many people in the comments told her to just brush this off as normal nerds being nerd stuff, and many commenters used the fact that she was a woman as a, an excuse for these players' behavior. So, anyway, that, that's kind of the jumping off point for this, because that sucks. Um, whether you're a woman trying to like play in a space like that, which is intimidating as hell, to be honest. If I, I can't imagine, like our shop is probably better than a lot of them in terms of female representation. And, and even that means we have like on, on the best of nights, one out of 10 people is a woman in there. So like in the best of circumstances, our shop that's better than most. And that's still probably kind of tricky to walk into. And it's definitely tricky when everyone's intentionally being Ignore, or feels like they're ignoring you. I don't want to like assume too much about anybody there because I wasn't there. This is like a third hand account or whatever. But that kind of thing happens. Like it, it absolutely does. And it's n both not nice to the player and not good for the format in general. And I want to kind of talk about this a little bit because Chris, you are someone who works there. Correct. And unlike this shop, you guys, while you do play games on occasion, you always have to have, you guys always have somebody, if not multiple somebody's working behind the counter trying to do matchmaking. Yes. So how do you guys handle stuff like that on, on Commander Night when new players come in that don't know anybody and are looking for pods? So the first thing that we do, um, this has actually happened quite a bit regularly the last couple of weeks, um, including this week. Uh, what we do is when new players come in, we usually immediately flag down a certain select group of people because we know who they are personally, um, know how they are, you know, like everything about them, um, how they're going to be and everything. And then we set them up in a pod with them. For instance, this week we had two gentlemen who came in, um, had just bought new precons and they wanted to play. So we flagged down a friend of the show, Kyle. Um, <laughs> and we asked him, we said, we have precons in the back that are already sleeved up. Would you want to play a game with them? And he's like, sure. What precons you got? So we pulled out a precon and let them play. And they actually played the entire night. So it wasn't nice. even like he only played one game and jumped into no, it was the entire night type of thing. Um, so that's what we try to do is to find, you know, someone who we can trust to play with a new person who's not going to go, you know, OP, spike a pod, you know, something right. dumb like some players do, or just ignore him in general. That's usually how we start. If we can't, then we have to go around the point of either seeing what kind of pods are open, who we can look at and be like, okay, this should be an okay pod for them to play in. Or we'll just take our own time and sit down with them and play. So, so first, yeah. Um, and, and we actually, Max and I had a drink with Kyle, um, last weekend and talked about this, this show topic. So this would have been before yes. Tuesday's EDH night. Yep. We talked that we were going to do this and Kyle's like, yeah, a lot of times Chris will grab me and put me in a pod with new players, which yep. then two days later you did again. <laughs> well, it's just, it's easy. So like if you would have been there, Dana, I would have contacted you too. Sure. To do yeah. It. You've grabbed, definitely grabbed me before for that kind of thing as well. So from a store point of view, honestly, I, I think more stores need to be, be paying attention to that. You just need to be a little bit proactive when you see somebody come in that looks like they're looking for a game and don't know what they're doing. You know, in this case, they they straight up, it was obvious because they had just bought precons, but like people, you can get a feel for it. You guys do a fantastic job of that. I think that's something that that's kind of incumbent upon stores to keep an eye on a little bit is just to do that work. And in this case, the store owner was there and didn't do it. That's a That's a problem. But you've just made you, – you also have made business, then those guys are going to come back. Yes. 
Yeah, because a lot of times people leave happy because yeah. you set them up in the right you know situation where they're going to enjoy their time, and then they're like, "This was a great experience. I want to experience it again." So I, I guess it doesn't do any good for the player in this case. But like, first thing I would say is if 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 people that are listening right now playing a shop regularly, and you're in a situation where your shop doesn't do that kind of thing, I would you know be nice and talk to your shop owner and be like, "Hey, I, I was." There's some guys I listen to on, on a podcast talking about their shop doing this, and we don't do a great job of this. Maybe we could keep a better eye on it because it's not even just – you can make the case that it's good for business too. Like, you know, people will come back if you guys spend a little bit of effort making sure that new players get put into pods with people that are going to treat them well and make them want to come back. Yes, definitely. I know our store is a little different because I've been to other stores, <laughs> and our store owners sure. prioritize the community first. Absolutely followed by making money second as long as our store owner can keep the doors open you know if he's breaking even he doesn't care about the rest of it he and it probably to... helps that like it's it, it's a it's a family business in that it's him and his wife too that yes. like adds a sense of, of of community to it that maybe isn't present in a lot of places but yeah definitely there's something shop owners need to pay attention to the next one we from like from the player standpoint if you are there try to be a bit of an ambassador too and like you those guys noticed she was standing there like come on they did and because because we've all had that happen before where you see that person you're like hey you know but we try to be like a little more inviting and say you're looking for a game whatever or maybe you need to be even even more proactive than that as an ambassador of commander and be like, we're buried in a pod right now and it's going to be an hour, but I can, Hey, those two guys over there are really nice to play with. Why don't you go see if they want to play a game or even stand up and say, Hey guys, just give me 30 seconds and, and walk over and say, Hey, do you guys mind if like, that's not for everyone. If you're not super outgoing, maybe you don't want to do that. But like, if you're comfortable, maybe try to take that next step and, in, in, like I said, be an ambassador for the format and try to get people into pods like that. Yeah, I feel, I mean, like when I read that whole story and everything, I actually got mad about this because it was straight up just dumb to hear everything about that, you know? Well, it, and I will say it, it is kind of easy to, so for example, there's definitely been nights when I've been at the shop and Max has came and played. Um, and, and Max doesn't come and play that often anymore. So like Max is there and you know, our buddy Dr. Mike's there and Kyle's there or something. And we all jump in a po pod right away. And like, I just want to play with my friends tonight. Like, I just yes. don't want to go somewhere else. But but you can still do that. You can just say, play with the same four people for like four games while also not being rude to someone else. Like someone comes over, don't just go, don't just ignore them. Just be like, yeah, we're sorry. This game's going to take a while. And like, we wanted to play one more with each other or something. Like, just, just communicate. That solves so many problems. Yeah, I am seriously, you know wondering about this because i've heard recently of a few other stores that are actually near us that their commander crowd is actually like the the black sheep crowd type of thing of the you know the community of their community or whatever where you know people are like uh they don't like the commander crowd but they like the competitive crowd because that's where you know majority of the nice people are type of thing so that could be in a situation too sure. with this. And I was thinking about that just recently after I heard about other communities that have an issue with Commander Nights. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if that's the issue is that it's actually the people that are playing the Commander that night at that store. Could be. And, and it well, wasn't, and, and, you know, directed towards her. It's just that they're just not nice people to begin yeah, with. it could be. Because like in our case, when we, we've got 40 to 50 people playing on a Commander Night, it's tough to, for that to, to not feel communal. When yes. there's that many people in the room and like that much activity, like it just naturally kind of makes people talkative and like it kind of, it, whereas if it's just the same four or six dudes sitting in a quiet room playing with each other every single week, I can see how that could be a little bit insular. Yes. Yeah. That's, I mean, I had to like reread this story a few times because sure. when I first heard about this, it was all hearsay, you know, like I hadn't read it or yeah, anything. Right, yeah. And the first thing that popped in my mind was, I know a few people that come into our For store sure. <laughs> that you don't want to play with. And sure, reasons yeah. are not that happens. because yeah. of who they are. It's like, so how like they play. Yeah, it's how someone plays or their hygiene or something like that. That's sure. been a big <laughs> issue lately is hygiene. And no offense to some people, but it, sometimes it just happens. You yeah, know, and it's it going to cause an issue. So that's something to keep in mind, too, is like if it's not a clean area, people aren't going to be feel comfortable to come in and play. Yeah, absolutely. So this came up actually at Command Fest Indie to a degree, and I, I, I do feel like I'm name dropping here, and I'm really not. And there's no other way to mention this, but like there was, a, we had a, a couple content creators had a chance to sit down and talk to Sheldon about Sheldon Menery about some things in the format. So I'm not bragging here. I'm just it was it <laughs> shelf, it was Sheldon. I mean, I, I guess I kind of am, but like I'm not trying to. But one of the things, the the, the thing he wanted to talk about was how to foster a, a better experience at LGSs in terms of like getting 
strangers to play together. And and, and I haven't had a chance because I haven't been in the shop really for, with time, but I wanted to, to talk to you and Ben about it at some point because one of the things that we were all – when we were all kind of brainstorming is to maybe set up something at LGSs where there's just a few whiteboards mounted to walls like above tables where people are playing commander with like a, a marker there. And you could just by if you have a pot of three and you're looking for one more, you just put a, put a one on it or, or looking for two, put a two on it or something. So like people can come in and be like, oh, that, that there's a table. They're looking for two people right now. OK, I like that. Just things like that, like ways to have even nonverbal cues when you walk into a room with a bunch of people and you're like, I want to play, but like, because it can be intimidating to walk up and say, are you guys looking for somebody? No, no, we're not. Oh, like, go to the next table. Are you guys looking for somebody? No, no, we're waiting for somebody. Like that can suck. Whereas if you have that, we're like, I just know that table's looking. I can just go over there and not have to like worry about being rejected. Yeah. Because it's different at a command fest because I, I guess the kind of a corollary to that would be at a command fest, just everyone just walks because like it's there's so many people and so many tables. Did we ever sit around and wait for a game very often, Max? Like maybe first thing in the morning, but like people, it's just it's just nonstop. There's just so many people and everyone at that point, you're in that room. Nobody's shy, really. Everyone just comes up and asks for a game. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Like, command fests, I think, are a little different than this situation yeah. to the point where you're there for – one day, two day, three days, strictly to play Commander versus I have two to three hours on a Tuesday night yep. to get in as many games as I can, where I think the mindset for me personally is different. I go to a Command Fest saying, yeah, I would love to play every game I can with Dana and two others, but I'm also fine playing with three strangers or whoever, or maybe friends I meet at the event because we played with them on Friday right. and we just hooked up with them again on Saturday, where... You know, like you said earlier, on Tuesday night at the shop, I kind of just want to go play with my friends because I haven't seen, right. you know, someone in a couple weeks or this person in a couple weeks. It's more of a catch up than play commander situation for me where a command fest is I'm just there to play commander. Yeah, the, the environment of there, I think, again, like we talked about the difference between a shop with like four people playing in, in, with each other every single week can be a little isolating versus our shop versus a command fest where it's, again, so much more their direction where it's just everyone's just talking and looking for games for the most part. So finding that middle ground, I think, where at your LGS, you can we, we can be more welcoming to people so we don't have situations like this. I think it's just good for everybody long term. Yeah, I agree. I, it also comes down to the community itself, too. Like, I could do, yeah. you know, this whiteboard thing, but there are certain clicks, you know, I hate sure, using absolutely. that word, but yeah. there are certain clicks within your community where it's like these four people are always going to play with each other. And that's all they want to do is just play with each other. They don't want to play with anybody else. So. If it's only three of them, they're not going to want a random fourth to jump in with them because they. Well, there, there's literally a, a, a group of um, people here in town that have just that I know that have just started going to the shop to play on Tuesdays, and they're all guys that work together. Okay. And, and they and they want to play together. So like I, I'm in their text chain because I I used to play with them at, at someone's house on occasion. But like they've been doing that. Like you know who's going to play tonight? Okay, we've got we've got four. We have eight. We have twelve. However many guys are going in. But but they've been keeping track of that because like they want to play with each other. They're all friends yep. from work. They want to talk. Sh they want to talk trash to one another the entire time. So so they've been like that's an intentional thing on their part. And like I get that. They, and if they are there at five o'clock and they're waiting for that third person or the fourth person to show up at five fifteen, and, and you come up and ask to play, they're probably going to say, "Oh, we're waiting for somebody." And that's not nothing personal. It's just like they all want to play with the people that they see at work during the day and and have been like hyping up their deck and want to be able to beat their friends with. So like that situation isn't personal. That's or, and it's not them being jerks. They just want to play with one another. And I, I mean, I get that. Yeah. And one of the things that that um, TV boy said that that bothered him was talking about people um, making excuses for the people that were ignoring her. I, I'm not going to make excuses, but I, I also like let's recognize the reality of the situation. There's probably more introverted or socially awkward people at a magic event than there is at. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what the equivalent of that would be where people get together at a, you know, people that are a fantasy baseball draft or something. Like, the reality is magic as a hobby tends to kind of attract sometimes introverted people, people that maybe don't have the best social skills sometimes. Like, that's – demographically, magic is just – has more than the average amount of those kind of people. That's – I don't know what you can do about that. That's going to definitely at some point in time, that's going to cause awkward interaction. So I'm not making an excuse. I'm just like the reality is that's going to happen. So yeah. those of us that don't suffer from that, like I'm definitely more extroverted than Max, I would say. <laughs> yes, you that's, are. That's um, an understatement. <laughs> 
but like I, it's it's not if, if Max is being quiet, it's not personal. It's just how Max is. So like maybe it's incumbent upon me to do some outreach in a situation where we're playing there because it, Max is is quiet. And he's not going to. It's like that's the kind of thing you got to keep track of too. If you're somebody like in the shop, Chris, you and Ben are very like talkative, outgoing guys. Not everyone there is. So like you guys do the extra work that someone else isn't going to be doing in terms of customer engagement. Yeah, it does. I have had to do that with people and it does become quite awkward because like yeah. you're trying to start the conversation with them repeatedly <laughs> yeah. and then they just keep killing the conversation and sure. you're like, what do you want from me? I don't know what to do. <laughs> and, and they can't help it. It is what it is. But yeah. like, yeah, that, that's, that is the thing you are going to have to, I, I will say, uh, as much as we want people to be more outgoing and do a better job of like fostering a good game environment, that's also like some people are just not comfortable and that's going to be a thing you're going to have to deal with as well. You're going to have to deal with a pod of like three friends who aren't the most socially engaged people and they're going to be a little bit awkward if you come over and that's maybe not personal and i also don't want to tell them change your personality yeah so yeah, that's the hard part like i didn't i didn't like all the comments neither like i actually read the reddit post like the comments through there and i was ugh. like you guys are just being a bunch of hoodlums i i hated that so much I couldn't believe how what they had to say to her. I was like, "You're supposed to be supporting yes. the community, not dragging yes. it down." Especially again, the added the added twist here of it being a woman in a space that's not always the most welcoming to women. Yeah, I like she was putting herself out there. Like that was a that, huge, that's really huge tough, thing for her. Difficult to do in the best of circumstances, let alone being a woman in LGS. Yeah, that absolutely. Was, I put all fault. On the store owner, and uh, yes. you know, I hate having to just blame one person, but it goes all to them because they were present when this was all happening. You, when when you, I, I I tend to agree. When you are, I mean, even if you're an introverted, so you know, quiet person who owns a shop, that's still your business. That's still your responsibility to try to make that a welcoming space for people. And it, maybe you're not comfortable doing that, but like that's one of the situations where, like, unlike the players who I'm, I'm not going to tell you to break out of your introverted shell if you're not comfortable doing that. But if you're the shop owner, like you've taken on that responsibility to maybe do that a little bit more, for yeah. sure. Because the other thing that I was looking at that too, like, so it's two full pods, and one of them had the store owner in it. Me being a store employee, you know, like running a store, it literally what happens is you just drop out of the game. It's yep. that simple. And you walk up to the counter, you run the business like you're supposed to, and you put that person in there who's looking for a game into that game. You know, like you you kind of do like matchmaking thing. You like you like you just jam them in there, mm -hmm. set it up, and that's how you make relationships happen. I mean, it's yep. just it's that simple. It's a little bit like like being a dad and like, you know, when there's two pieces of pizza left, you give your kid the bigger piece of pizza. I, I give my kid both of them because he's a glutton. Sure, well, yeah, like not, yeah, yeah there you go. But like, like that's that's part of like the 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 agreement you've made when you're being when you're a parent is like you take <laughs> yep. make those sacrifices for your kid. That, that sounds dramatic, I know, but like when you're the shop owner, like that's part of the responsibility there. Like I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take one for the team. I'm going to step out of this pot and make sure this person is comfortable and having a good time as much as I can. Anyway, that's like part of that. It's that kind of that same social transaction. Yeah, or. You go, so we'll say it was eight people, so that would have made nine with her showing up. You break right. into three pods of three. Yeah. It's that simple. You can do it that way, too. And then everyone's playing. Or, you know, or a five, but that sounds awful. <laughs> no, well, no, I've, no, no, I've, I've had five, to do five, it five. before. I mean, it, <laughs> it happens sometimes, but... Yeah, no, that's, I think we're, we're all very much in, in agreement. Um, have any of you guys seen, like, been in situations, and, and I guess we, you already talked about this a little bit, Chris, where what you guys do when a new player comes in, have you guys ever seen anything that was, like, a real good experience where uh, somebody is, like, looking for a pod and you've seen players really be, do a good job or go above and beyond for, for making them feel welcome and th that you can think of uh, finding a way to include them in the game? Um, I mean, so I don't actually pay attention too much to the game itself after i get people paired up so i can't say about good experience but there are just you know like you know who to talk to to have people play with them sure yeah i mean i've been in situations at our shop where a, a father and his son walk in and say hey we're new you know do you mind playing with us you know we listen to commander central i'm like sure no problem yeah, yeah. and it's always a good experience because i think when listeners ask to play with us for the first time, they kind of know what they're getting into based on hearing about our decks that we talk about all the time. And just they kind of already know us mm -hmm. in that weird way because they listen to us every week. So I think that helps break the ice. But at the same time, we've also welcomed complete new players to our shop or just random strangers into our pods. And we've always had pretty decent experiences doing that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I can think of quite a few of times we've done that where just 
a random new person comes in and it's like, yeah, come play with us. You just don't play with them. And you're like, oh, that was an awesome game. Let's yeah. play again. Yeah. Well, I, and I can think of like, I, I, I'm not, our shop is super specific. So like, I don't want to go into too many, like this one person is really good because it does no good for 99.9% .9 of, <laughs> of people out there. But we've talked about our friend, Dr. Mike before. So one of the, so I'm, I'm going to use him for an example, just because this is the you know kind of behavior I think that we're, that we're talking about wanting to see. He is super – he's only been playing a couple of years, but like he just naturally does this thing when he's playing even with people he doesn't know or especially with people he doesn't know. They'll play – you know, they'll play their couple of cards or commanders and he's always very like, oh, oh, I love that card. That's a great card. That's super cool. Or like someone makes a good play. He's always the first person, even if he's the person getting blown out by it, to be like, oh, you got me. You know, his attitude about those kind of things when he's playing with people, particularly strangers – is super welcoming and people genuinely like I as the third party sitting there kind of watching it people respond to that like people enjoy playing with him because of that he makes them leave those games not only having enjoyed the game but like they feel better about the entire experience it makes them feel better about the game about the entire game of magic and commander as a whole because he made it into something that like made them feel good and, and I don't think he's doing that intentionally he's that's just how he is as a person but it's something that i've actually ha having noticed him do it accidentally i now try to do it a little bit on purpose too because like, i see how effective it is at making people enjoy the game so as a result i've made it an, an effort to do a little bit of what he does and like and have that attitude and try to like do a good job congratulating people or like being interested in what they're doing because the 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 feedback from that and the response you get is is amazing. So I, I wanted to shout that out. It, 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 that doesn't really matter because most people don't know who he is. But like in a general sense, being that kind of player is really, really good for the overall experience. Yes, he's always got a smile on his face. It's great. I love playing with he, him as well. Yeah, he literally could be like if the rules committee wanted to make training videos on how to do like yes. a, how to have a great <laughs> pod of EDH. He would be the star of every single one of those videos. Absolutely. Yeah, full full agreement. And that's true, really, like, I would say, if you're somebody who watches a lot of streamed commander content, most content creators are pretty good at that. Um, that's probably why most of them are content creators, right? They're like, you have to be kind of outgoing to do that job. You know, ha both having had her on stream and watched her at multiple events, Rachel Weeks is fantastic. Yeah. Um, Olivia Gobert Hicks is fantastic. Heck, Brian Kibler, who you wouldn't have thought, <laughs> who you would have thought was just a throat slitter based on the fact that he's a pro, is really great at those things. Like, he's great at, like, making everyone feel like they are a, a good friend of his in a pot. Like, a lot of those people do a great job of that. And maybe you don't need to try to be Olivia or Brian or Rachel. That's a pretty tough thing to do. But, like, just the little things make a huge difference out there to make people feel welcome. Yeah, now that I think about it, yeah, because I've played against a pro before. I've seen a buddy of mine play against a pro, and they're a completely different breed when you play against them. They're more inviting than you actually think they are. Yeah, yes, surprisingly, it, yeah. It's very, it's very odd to see that, you know, and I think it's because that's their persona. Like, that's what they have to show, you know, is like, this is who I am. I have to be this inviting person, and, you know, and that's what makes them a pro, where just a well-known person is by doing yeah. something like that. Yeah. Absolutely, for sure. Okay, hey, I, are there any final thoughts here before we wrap this up from anybody? Just I, be I, nice I, to oh, people. I, just, I got just, a whole yes. bunch of thoughts, but I'm going to keep them to myself. <laughs> no, so Max, I like that, though, because I made this comment to somebody on, on, on Twitter this week. Oh, it, okay, okay, so yes, be nice to people is a good thing to do just in general in life. But if you want to be pragmatic about it, if you want to be cutthroat about it, you're going to do better for the most part in pods if you're nice. So like, even if you all you care about is the percentages, you're going to get attacked less if you're nice to people. That's, I, I think, also something that I think is true. <laughs> it there's doesn't a work for me. How yeah. Does, that's, well, that's not fair. <laughs> there's a strategic advantage most of the time, I would say, to like being an affable, outgoing person versus like being a sullen jerk. I, <laughs> I've I, tried and I still get targeted off the board. Maybe, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so generally speaking, I would say there's an advantage to that. So, yeah, no, that's that's a good point. But you're just usually in life going to get further being nice people than you are not. And that's yes. not always easy to do. I absolutely am guilty on Twitter on occasion of telling someone to get effed, and that's probably not the best behavior on my part either. So we uh, all could guess, do better, I guess is what I'm I saying. Mean, 
you could be playing in a game, and this is a big thing that I think people need to go back to their roots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I've been guilty of it, and I've had to do it personally, you know, where you get frustrated and you say something. Ten minutes later, I'll hunt that person down, and I'll go and apologize. For sure. Because, you know, I realize I'm like, I was a complete dink. I should not have done that. And this person deserves an apology. So I'll go and apologize. And that actually builds a yeah. relationship with that person because they're like, okay, he was big enough to come over yeah. and apologize because he knew that he was wrong. And then, you know, you guys start a good conversation. And, you know, there's a couple of people that, you know, I talk to regularly now after having to do something like that. So, I mean, yeah, that's so, something. No, good point. Don't ever be afraid to go and apologize if something went wrong or whatever else. Yeah, no, that's a real good point. All right. I think that is going to wrap up Commander Central episode of 326. I'm Dana. You can find me on Twitter at Dana Roach. You can find Max at CMDR Central underscore Max. And you can find Chris at Squishy one Our show is edited by Rafael Garcia. And you can find them on the Twitter birds at Ursa Bearwalker. Our podcast theme is Retro Future Dirty by Kevin McLeod, licensed via Creative Commons. And we'll be back next Thursday with a deck tech followed by a new show the following Monday. Until then, I'm Dana. I'm Max. And I'm Chris. We'll